let's take a look at scoping in Google Analytics. Analytics now features three core scopes. Previously, we only had one. It was based on the session. In the new Google Analytics, we have scopes for user, session, and event. For user, this is focused on what was the first channel that acquired this user or their first touch. Session is which channel is responsible for starting that particular session. An event is really focused on the channel that influenced the key event, such as a purchase. Note that all of these are dimensions and have slightly different names. So user is gonna be first user source, first user medium, first user campaign, and so on. Session scope dimensions will be called out with session source, session medium, session campaign, and event scope dimensions are just source, medium, and campaign. It's also important to note that there's been a change around how sessions are scoped. Specifically, mid-session channel changes will not start a new session. So in the scenario we have here on the screen, we have somebody who comes to the website via a page view for session one. They came via Google CPC as their channel. And this is the first time that the user arrived to the site. So their user scoped source and medium will be Google CPC. Next, they have 30 minutes of inactivity and then later return to the site, starting a new session. So this is session two. And they came back via Google Organic. In this case, their session scope dimensions will be Google Organic. Now they have a page view, they view their cart, and then they go out to another website and they pick up some sort of partner or affiliate UTMs, likely via a coupon code. And then they return to site to again view their cart and complete the purchase. Now note that this going out to another website and picking up new UTMs does not automatically start a third session. So their session scoped dimensions will not change from Google Organic, but their event scope dimension for the purchase will update and become partner affiliate in this case. So to dig a little bit deeper on what we just talked through, the purchase will actually be attributed to different scopes depending on which reports you are looking at. In this visual, we're gonna represent the purchase with this star. So you can see here for the user, the transaction of the purchase is attributed to the user's first origin in the user scope reports, which would be Google CPC in this case. For session scoped reports, the transaction of the purchase is attributed to the session origin, which is Google Organic. And finally, for event scoped reports, the transaction or purchase is attributed to the last origin in the path to purchase in the event scope, which in this case is the partner or affiliate UTMs that they picked up when they went out to that external website. Also note that when we're looking at data-driven attribution modeling, or DDA, credit is distributed across the various touch points. So in this case, we will see some credit given to the first user, the Google CPC UTMs in this case, some credit given to the session start, so Google Organic, and some credit given to the partner affiliate UTMs that the user picked up when they went to the external website. In the DDA model, the purchase credit is attributed to all three touch points of this path to conversion according to their weight of their contribution, which will be different for every path and is determined by the DDA modeling. Now let's dig in on some example use cases of scoping and how you actually find these reports in the Google Analytics user interface. For use cases with user scoping, these are really impactful to identify growth opportunities. So for example, a user visits your website from a paid search ad. They spend time researching an item, add it to their cart, but they don't check out and the session ends. A week later, they come back from an email and they make the purchase. This is important because the paid search ad was the original driving force of this conversion. It led to the user spending all of that time researching and actually adding the items to their cart. Now keep in mind that additional touch points are not considered for user scope dimensions. It's only the first campaign that brought the user to your site. So in this case, the paid search ad. So how do you identify this in Google Analytics? To identify the user scoped 
channels that brought users to your site for the first time, you would go to the user acquisition report. So if we flip over to the analytics user interface here for the Google Merchandise Store, we can go to the report section, acquisition, and user acquisition. This report will show us the channels that first brought a user to your site. So in this case, for the Google Merchandise Store, it looks like direct, organic search, referral, and cross-network are some of the top channels that have brought users to the Google Merchandise Store website. Next, let's look at session scoping. As an example here, a user adds an item to their cart, but then they go out to the internet and they search for a coupon code, which picks up those additional affiliate UTMs, similar to the scenario we looked at earlier. Now this is important because the affiliate code is not the campaign that started the session, and it may or may not be the reason for the conversion. It could be that the user was going to purchase anyways, and so whatever started the session would be the important channel to pay attention to, and that the coupon code was just a bonus in terms of their purchase. Now keep in mind that the traffic acquisition report will attribute key events to the session scope dimensions, whereas purchase events will be attributed to the affiliate campaign parameters. So how do we identify this in Google Analytics? Here specifically, we are gonna look at that traffic acquisition report. So if we flip back over to the Google Analytics user interface, we can go from the user acquisition report down to the traffic acquisition report. Now this report will look similar to the one we were just looking at, but in this case, it's looking at the session-based scoping. So which channels started the session? So for the Google Merchandise Store, it looks like direct, organic search, referral, and paid search are some of the top channels that started sessions on the Google Merchandise Store website. Finally, we have our event scoped use cases. And these are important for identifying mid-session changes. So again, the same example of a user adding an item to their cart, but then going out to the internet to search for a coupon code, which then picks up an affiliate UTM. When they come back, they complete the purchase. And like we said before, this may or may not have been driven by that coupon code, but for some use cases, that coupon code may have been the deciding factor driving that purchase which is why it's important to be able to analyze by that. Keep in mind that the user may or may not have converted without the affiliate code, we don't really know, but the event scope dimensions help to identify when this experience occurred. So how do we identify this in Google Analytics? This is where we can use explore reports using the attribution dimensions and key event metrics. So back over in the analytics interface, we will navigate to the explore section. And I'm going to open up a free form report, either from scratch or from one that I already had open. Now in our free form report, we'll want to make sure that we have a handful of dimensions available to use. These include event name, medium, source, source medium, and campaign. We'll also want to be sure to have the metrics of purchases, purchase revenue, and key events. If you don't already have these metrics or dimensions available in your freeform report, you can always add them by clicking the plus icon, opening up this screen, and the event scoped ones live under this attribution section, as you can see here. Or you can search in the search box for the dimensions that you need, or similarly in the metric screen for the metrics that you need to add. We'll go ahead and add source medium by double clicking and I will scroll down and add purchase revenue and key events by double clicking. Now we can see the event scoped source medium along with purchase revenue and key events, but we wanna narrow this down to a specific key event, specifically purchases. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the dimension for event name by double clicking. And as you can see, most of these at the top of the list are purchase. Now. I have a hundred rows showing here. That should be enough. If I scroll down, we will see that we will have other events here. They don't have any purchase revenue, but they do have key events associated. So if I wanted to narrow down to just my purchase event, I could go ahead and scroll down in the settings pane to the filter section down at the bottom, click in, 
and select Event Name, must exactly match Purchase, and hit Apply. Once I do that, it'll narrow it down to only events for purchase. It'll show me which source mediums influence these key events for purchase and the associated purchase revenue. So that is how you can use event scoping to understand the influence on purchases. So in closing, Analytics now has three different scopes, user, session, and event, and you should now have a good understanding of when they are useful and how to pull reports using these different scope dimensions.